All right, hello, good evening. Welcome to the Stage Analysis Members Weekend video. So it's Sunday, the 7th of November. So this video is gonna is not just gonna be for the members this weekend. I'm gonna um gonna make it public on on YouTube so that some some non-members can get get a sample of the kind of thing that I do do each weekend on the on the members video. So I do do two videos a week, as well as obviously the private Twitter feed and the and the stage analysis forum. So on the weekend video, it's we're looking at the major market indexes, the uh, market breadth, group RS. Um, individual stocks making stage two breakouts. Um, let's have a quick flick through. So you've got some major index charts. We, we look at some market breadth. There's various different market breadth charts that we go through. Uh, look at some of the industry group um, RS and uh, using the what's had the strongest moves of the week and etc. So we can f zoom in on some of those. Go through some of my own individual trades. Um, some things that have been have been breaking out some new stage two breakouts for example um a few other ones and then base and end off with the, the weekend weekend watch list stocks so and i normally do cover um crypto major cryptocurrencies as well and some any of the various altcoins that are of interest but um, I'm not going to do that on this video today, as, as you can see from the the amount of tabs at the top here. Got a lot to get through, so I'll I'll separate out the the crypto this weekend, and I'll do that during the week at some point. Okay, so to um, for people new to um, this, basically stage analysis is is based on on Stan Weinstein's um, classic book. So I use a combination of, of Stan Weinstein's method and Wyckoff and Canslim and Mark Minervini, et cetera. So the core of the method is obviously stage analysis uh, mixed with with Wyckoff as, as Wyckoff is, is really, really useful for analyzing um, price and volume structures within bases. So it really helps when you're in stage one or stage three bases, which are the accumulation and distribution bases within um, the the stage analysis method. So at the moment, this is this is the intraday chart of the S and P five hundred using the SPY. So this shows the shows the four stages that we look at, and at the moment we're still we're still in a current stage two advance. Obviously, getting a little bit extended short term. You can see we had a, a little pop late into the week there. We're starting to get a little bit away from the, the key moving averages. If we zoom out a bit on this, go to the, the free ATR chart. So I use another thing that I use in my trading quite a lot is the is the ATR bands. So um, don't necessarily use it with the with the elder impulse, but it's one way to one way to look at it. So, but with the with the candlesticks and the the free ATR bands with a, a twenty one day moving average, so each one of these one eighty ATR levels is one ATR. So that's a one ATR line. That's two and that's three. And then below is a minus one, minus two, and minus three. So it works very similar to Bollinger bands, but I prefer the the ATR bands there. They're much smoother, and basically it tells you when you're when you get into short term extremes and, and it's a really good way of grading your trades as well I've found over the years so at the moment s p 500 we've we've blown out of the the free ATR level and as you can see um, from just from this chart back in back in April was the last time they actually managed to get outside of the the free ATR level other than this one day in late June early July there but often once it once it gets gets out of those the free ATR levels it will tend to consolidate for a while as it it's obviously getting a little bit ahead of itself um we look at the the QQQ as well here similar sort of price action as we saw on the SP um the SP 500 intraday you can see this was moved from stage 3 into 4 and then we made a small stage 1 base and back out into stage 2 and again starting to get a little bit extended short term on the upside here on the QQQ as again we've blown blown out of the free ATR level here which which is a rarity so we don't often get outside of the bands so we go back on these in a second so we can have a look at two hour on this as well so back in September time back around this point here the 20th of September I started to highlight to the members back back then that this was a potential short-term selling climax so using the Wyckoff method we had a, a selling climax with an automatic rally then coming in for our secondary testing and we had a bit of a complex test going on in here 
within the stage one base. So the NASDAQ was, as you can see, continued to make lower lows, whereas the S&P 500 didn't, didn't manage to commit below, significantly below this, this September 20th low here. So this was, this was an area where I was started to get interested in stocks with obviously showing much um, more relative strength than others. So a lot of the, the growth type names at that point and some of the trades I'll, I'll show you later. Actually, I can quickly highlight now. I think ZS might have been in one of them. So ZS, for example, here I got in around this point. So the market still continued off down there and pulled back a bit, but it, it didn't really commit much below the 50 day. I only had a single day below the 50 day there before reversing back up. So it got close to getting stopped out as this was a potential, I was aiming for a position trade on this one. So I generally hold with position trades and don't don't get out until we've had a multiple closes below the 50 day moving average if if the entry point is close enough to it so with the market volatility in the qqq still continuing lower during that period it did obviously drag on various stocks but other stocks um that i traded like for example snow you can see the the pullback in snow was was much less dramatic there and then continued on higher and the same with um what have we got there? Um, Unity software. We did have a did have a sharp pullback, but it never really got much below my my entry point, which was actually back in back in August in in Unity there. So at the moment, SP five hundred and and QQQ both both fairly fairly in sync. We're we're still in a stage two uptrend, but we're short term short term extended at the moment. If we look at it on the, the Nasdaq composite chart, you can see that we've, we've had a really strong run since the, the October the 4th low. We did a undercut here, so it was a, a spring spring and um, test here, so you can see, which has then followed through, and we've, we've moved, oh, got there since the low, about 12%, about 12% off of the low with, with very few pullbacks so far. So again, looking at the ATR bands here, we're, we're outside of that free ATR level, which again, with the NASDAQ composite especially is, is quite a rarity. We don't, we don't really get this extended. So we're either going into parabolic mode or we're going to need some consolidation and, and pulling back for a little bit to obviously digest this recent move. So the IBD 50 is another another index that I look at quite regularly. So I've been highlighting this one for a while, all the way back from the, the selling climax back in May when the automatic rally and secondary tests. So with Wyckoff, this is what we call our, our phase A area. Then we moved into the phase B testing area, which we had a little bit of upfrost action here as it, it pulled above this. And we made a spring type local spring in here back in July. And then followed by the last point of support here, when then moved up into what we call a, a sign of strength rally. So at this point here, it's unclear whether this was a sign of strength or or a further up thrust. So if we look at this on on a broader scale, so if I take this out to the chart on the weekly chart here, actually draw a box off the blue line there, put it back to black. So you can see the the, the stage three range that's been forming since then. So did have a lower base structure here which i was just highlighting there so it depended on how you were looking at this so whether you were using this this lower base structure here as a reaccumulation and follow through so this is your sign of strength rally and then backing up action and follow through or whether we were taking the, the broader structure as a, a major stage three sort of type action so we've got your buying climax and automatic rally and secondary tests and then we've been moving in there and this is a this could then potentially be up thrust action followed by this pulling back here so at the moment we still haven't made still haven't made a higher high here so this could still be an up thrust after distribution and this could be a last point of supply but it has it is getting up close to potential new highs here so if this can follow through then that would be a really good sign for the, the cancelling growth stocks and then we'd be moving off back back up into yeah back up into stage two up here so you'd want to see with that you want to see a strong volume um, bar there with with big volume ideally the biggest volume that we've seen of of late ideally so normally with the stage analysis method we're looking for two times the weekly average on a stage two breakout but with indexes you you, don't, you rarely get that kind of thing it's it's you just generally want to see strong volume so it might just be above average volume with an index so let's get back up to this. Um, QQQJ is another index that we track, which is again similar to the IBD50. It's it's got around a hundred stocks in it. It's the 
the next gen 100 ETF, which is the second NASDAQ 100 stock. So it's, uh, it's not so much the mega caps, but the, the large and mid cap type stocks. So more of the mid cap names. So this, this had a, a volatile period back in after it topped out in February. And then you can see the swings were, were still were really sharp back in March, April, May time. You can see in this second half of the base, it's been forming up in the higher half of the range. And the swings have got have got generally smaller of late. We had a much smaller pullback, especially at the end of October here. And we started to pull out and, and make higher highs on this one. Again, if we look at it on the weekly time frame, do the same kind of things we looked at with the 50. So you've got a major stage three sort of range in here. But again, we've got a lower lower base structure within in here that's also formed. So where you can see the selling climax and automatic rally in the secondary test, and then some testing in phase B, and then the whole LPS kind of area is formed in the upper range up here. So not even the not even 50% range is above that. So and we've got this whole sort of higher area forming up. So at the moment, again, this it's good to still be up for us after distribution. It hasn't yet committed above. So you can see we've we made a move above this week, but then it, it faltered and closed back down again with a squat. So if we if we start to see some price action like this where it starts to come back down, and especially if we see heavy volume on that, then that would be that would be severely negative. But if we get we get the opposite to that, we actually see a continuation up here and again we get some slightly bigger volume, ideally much bigger volume, then we're obviously off to the races and into stage two, stage two move, which would be the institutional advance phase as well. So QQQJ is a, is a area I'm watching quite closely at the moment still. As this this is the kind of kind of stocks that I trade in the majority of the time, which are the sort of Nasdaq growth type stocks. Um, this week was a was a big week for the small caps. We had a, a stage two breakout attempt, which obviously we closed the week strongly, so it actually confirmed the stage two breakout. So we look at this on the weekly chart first. You can see it's been making this this ginormous range for the last thirty or forty weeks here. Um, you can see the, the stage three range that developed. We had this first change of behavior here with an up thrust, and it's been it's been chopping around, going sideways for the bulk of the last year since January time here, sort of late January, early February. We finally got this this break to the upside that I've been talking about over the, the last few videos in the last few weeks and midweek videos. And you can see the volume was actually slightly bigger. So I think I, the last video I did, I drew similar candle to this and said we wanted wanted to see a big bar similar to this type thing. So a little bit, probably a little bit less volume than I'd like to see there. You want to see, like I said, you want to see more than two times the average volume. But again, this is this is an index, so it's a it's a bit of a different story with the indexes as the the volume is is very different to individual stocks. So the fact that we had had a stage two breakout to new highs here, it cleared it quite convincingly. Six percent move on the week. The relative strength started to improve. It's still below the the rising zero line here. So we want to see this this relative strength line start to start to overtake, get back above, start to outperform the S and P five hundred. And then potentially start to move move off higher. So then the, see the small caps starting to starting to outperform as as when the small caps outperform, as we can see from this November through to January time here. As we know, that was a that was a really really strong period in the market in general. As obviously lots more speculation goes on once the once the small cap caps are having a strong move. So stage two in small caps is is good for everyone. Whether this this continues on is, is obviously an unknown at the moment. We'll, we'll see how the how it plays out over the next week. Whether we whether we get some consolidation, but if we do get some backing up action, if it does start to pull back in, with a, with breaks out, breakouts like this, um, what we call a sign of strength rally on the stage two breakout, you want to see the backing up action not not come back into the range. You want to see the range act as act as support, and then for it to to consolidate maybe base base above the range before making a continuation breakout which would obviously give you a, a low risk entry point with a stop loss um, under here within support with the moving averages starting to, to continue on up to the upside there so that's kind of thing um, i'll be looking out for obviously if we continue on immediately just continue to run then that would obviously signal real strength in the market 
Um, if we look at the the IWO, which is the the Russell 2000 growth stocks. So this is the small cap growth. So it hasn't performed as well as the the small caps in general, which includes the NYSC names. But as you can see, if we go back to the the daily chart on this one. You can see that if we compare the two by flicking between, you can see this has broken out much more convincingly. We had a we had a good move this week on the growth type names, but Thursday and Friday this started to stall out a little bit here. We do, got the same type of thing on the on the small cap names here, but if we zoom out a little bit further on this to the the full range, you'll be able to see a little bit better. So it's not showing it not showing it greatly there so you can see the small cap the small cap growth names actually made a high around the same time but they've formed a range within the lower lower range it had a much much bigger initial sell-off than, than growth in the small cap names in general first of all which only pulled back a little bit into the the rising 50-day moving average there whereas the, the small cap growth convincingly dived below the 50-day moving average and, and got much further down into the the depths there, so ten percent below, whereas we only we only dipped a little bit on the small caps, um, normal small caps, only two percent there below. So that's the the difference is that the the broader small caps have have shown much better relative strength compared to the the small cap growth, but we could potentially start to see some catch up in with the growth names as they they can move they can move really rapidly. So again, this is this is having similar moves to what we see in in other areas like ipo which hasn't yet broken out but has been, has been showing some good relative strength of late and which is has been doing much better than the likes of of arc which which has been underperforming not that one. Oh, do I do? which you can see the relative strength on arc has been has been underperforming you can see it's well below it's it's zero line here which is the the 52 week moving average of the s&p of of the stock divided by the s&p 500 so we use 252 days on the daily chart to to mimic the 52 week as that's how many trading days there are in in an average year you sometimes get 253 or 254 but 252 works pretty well as a as a proxy for the the 52 week um, oh, there you go. There's the arc chart. I've actually marked up a bit better here, so you can see it's been it's been in this range and is is yet to break out. Still hovering around its 200 day moving average. So generally showing some relative weakness in this one compared to what we're seeing in the in the likes of the the 50 and the QQQJ, which are which are breaking out. It's obviously near towards new highs there. Right, moving on. Just pause a second and go back. Okay, moving on. So next part of, of this video is gonna be on the market breadth charts. So again, this is this is something that I do do each weekend. I post I post all of the, the various market breadth charts that I'm looking at, including some custom ones like you're like you're looking at here with the percentage of stocks above the 50 day, 150 day, and 200 day moving averages chart combined. So this is something that I do, especially for members. And it's it's what I use as my market timing model, where we basically when the when the market is about when this is above the the fifty day moving average, its own fifty day moving average, and it's in a good field position, then it's on what we call a positive environment. And when it's below the fifty day moving average, which it has been for the majority of this year, so as you can see here, and moving moving down from the upper zone, then it's in what we call a, a difficult environment or negative environment, whatever you want to call it. So, but basically, it it doesn't mean doesn't mean you should be shorting necessarily. It just means that the as we've seen with growth stocks basing throughout the year, small cap oops, um, basing throughout the year, this this chart basically encompasses that. So you can see this, the, the bases that we've seen in the major indexes, except for the large caps, like this, this is actually showing what's going on underneath the surface as, as the percentage of stocks above there various moving averages short medium and long-term moving averages has been declining throughout the year and we we've based out over the last few months and we've now moved back into what we call a, a positive environment with this week making a making a breakout we've made multiple 
small little breakouts here. So double top breakout here back at 58%. So not quite in stage two land yet in terms of above, I, I consider above 60% sort of stage two sort of area in the middle sort of zone between 60 and 40 as either stage three or stage stage one and then below below 40 percent as sort of the stage four zone and I, I use a similar sort of technique on the on the bullish percent indexes as well which is an, another great market breadth tool for obviously analyzing what's going on underneath the surface and another one that we'll we'll look at in a minute but at the moment on this so um again for new members that haven't seen this before so this is the last three years here i think see all the way back in 2018 here when we were having our stage four decline back in, in late later on in the year. The entry point with these charts, as I said, is once you start to you start to make a get back into a positive environment, back above the 50 day moving average, this red line here. So we start to move into a positive environment and we're moving through this key 30 percent level. So this kind of area in here is kind of what I consider the, the buy point for these for this this market breadth chart on its own in terms of the time model so you can see back then 2019 january 2019 was kind of the buy zone for that one and then back again after the, the covid decline we got into the lower zone back in sort of february march time and then we started to move back out through the 20 day moving average and then through the 50 day moving average so sort of april time it was moving through the 20 day so starting to move into so when it moves through the 20 day moving average is when i I start to sort of move to neutral, neutral positive. It's kind of a, a stepping stone process through them. So, and then once we get through the 50 day and back through the 30% level, which was later on in April there, we're back into what we consider a positive environment. So as we know, sort of, we got follow through days back in around the 6th of, 6th of April type down this period here, same sort of thing in here. It was, this started to move through its 20 day, big, big move through there started to move off of a negative into a sort of more neutral neutral plus sort of environment as the moving average started to turn up as well and it started to strongly recover from the lower zone so the lower zone is considered the low risk area and the upper zone is considered the high risk area but obviously when you're in the low risk area when you're only first moving into it you're generally in stage four so stocks are obviously in a, a terrible state at that point and then they start to base and it's when it's starting to curl up and starting to come back out again is when you start to the low risk part of being in this this area becomes apparent and you you get obviously some of the best moves so if you if you got in at this point last year sort of mid to late april time when this gave its buy signal as did other other indexes and stuff as well same as the the january time back there then you obviously could have bought and hold indexes stocks whatever you wanted to buy and hold for the majority of all the way through to it topped out in february time this year and start to break back down in march here so you can see the the february march sort of breakdown through the 70 percent level so this is when it started to move back onto a, a negative environment signal again so we had a few little pops down back in september um, september and october time there but in 2020 but for the most part 2020 the market was on a positive environment so it was a really easy really easy environment to obviously make make gains whereas this year we've been on a difficult environment and it's been really difficult to make make good gains in terms of because it's been such a choppy environment with the indexes just basing and going sideways so it's been been much more short-term gains versus when you're in a positive environment you've got much more chance to be able to hold stocks for for swing and position trades whereas in this kind of environment you've got to get in and out a lot more quickly or obviously trade up to the mega caps which was was my strategy this year for the bulk of this in my in my pension account through this as we started to move off into here i I moved off into multiple mega caps in the pension and they've they've obviously served me well through that period and the the swing trading has been has been much more difficult throughout this sort of area. So the positive at the moment is that we're now moving back into what we consider a positive environment again double top breakout here but it's starting to get a bit obvious at the moment so early on in october here we started to move through a couple of times in late september so and then pull back we made a lower um higher low and then started to move up again so this was an area where i was starting to get really invested 
and I think I got fully invested again in the in the growth names around late September, and I, I stopped stopped making any trades at the end of September, and didn't didn't make any trades throughout the majority of October, all the way through to I only started making a few at the end end of October, and then this week I've started to to scale out of multiple names to to take profits on this on this short term move as it's with with a short term breakout a bit like a bit like you see with a, a cup and handle breakout in in cancelling type stocks and things like that a lot of the time it, they're a bit obvious so it it could be brilliant at this point but i know from experience of other years of that although these look great and in hindsight if you look back on them you'd be like oh i could have bought this could have bought that and it would have would have done fantastic but these periods when you're just coming out of a negative environment and moving into a more positive environment the the market can be very choppy still and you can obviously you have to you have to pick your stocks very carefully as they can obviously some some will some will be strong winners and some will will get wiped out so as the as you're still in that very sort of infant stage of moving into a positive environment so if this can this can continue on, we start to get back above the sixty percent level, then that will be that will be supremely bullish, and I'll get I'll get back to fully invested again. But for the for the moment, this is this has given me a bit of a cue to to trim a little bit into strength, but and then I'll be looking to to add back again into various names and and for new trades over the coming weeks. So um, if we look at this in a different way using the point of figure chart, so this is. Um, is exactly the same chart, but um, point of figure shows it much more cleanly, and you can see a few more years on this. So, with the point of figure chart, you can use the bullish percent index um, statuses. So, with this, you can use obviously double tops and a breakouts here. So, we've got a, a bull confirmed signal when you make a double top breakout there from. Um, and then basically when you're when you're moving off from the upper zone here so we had a we moved on to bear confirmed back in february time there and we've we've been in bear confirmed all the way through until this point in august where we got that first little bullish sign but then reversed back down in september and then started to chop around but again we made a higher low and followed through and then in october we got the bull confirmed signal there and then we've we've continued on and made a higher high now so we're back in in um, what we call offensive strategy now. So when you're in a column of X's, you're on offense. And when you're in a column of O's, you're on defense. So we're on bull confirmed and we're on offense at the moment. So although I've just told you, I'm obviously personally being a little bit defensive still. So as, as it's a, it can be a hard transition to make from being on defense for a long time into, into being offensive again. So I'm it's it's a kind of stepping stone process in terms of like using progressive exposure to to gradually scale back up again to being fully invested um or if you are fully invested to you might you might get caught out by taking profits too early i might with my trades this week i might might have taken profits too early and they may continue on to go up i had a had a few earlier in the year i think i bought into net net just as it broke out really early back on in in i think it was the may sort of time area when net was just just breaking out of its major base and i had a short term trade in that and took the swing and was happy with the game but obviously it's continued on to be one of the the tmls of the year so you win some you lose some in that regard but um, in generally, this is a uh, using this is is kind of my major risk model. So this gives a this gives me a great idea of whether I should be defensive or whether I should be on offense. So at the moment, more offense. But again, like I said, the other breadth indicators and indexes themselves are are suggesting to me at the moment that we're a little bit extended. So it's it's caused me to to trim off a little bit, but. Um, nothing major sort of back to around 45 to 50 percent invested versus being 100 percent invested last week so uh, moving on so this is uh, another another version of this chart here so it's basically the 50 the 50 day moving average line here is is flattened as a zero line so you can see the swings above and below the 50 day moving average so as you can see this year so from February time this year we've been below so back there it's February you see we moved below the zero line there so the 50 day moving average which is that line there and then for the bulk of this year we have been below that 50 day moving average so now with these few little pokes out this is our first 
first sign of progress above that 50-day moving average and starting to get more extended from it. So we're now almost 10% extended from the 50-day moving average on the, the market breadth chart here. So if we look back, this is we can see it's been a, a period where it's where it's topped out in more sort of normal market conditions, but obviously in more extreme conditions when you're making strong runs. So initial the initial run after the stage four bull market and the initial run um, bear market, I mean, in 2018 and the initial run after the COVID bear market 2020 it got it made much further progress so at this point here we're we're getting towards kind of the the fur, the extreme so i'd want to see it start to consolidate and chop around if we're in a more normal environment as as i wouldn't expect it to get fully extended as we've not come out of a, a major stage four decline we've just we've just had a sort of sideways stage three range for the bulk of the year so I would expect this to be a lot more a lot more normal and just chop around but ideally you want to see it chop around above that 50 day moving average so in the upper half of the chart versus what we've seen throughout the majority of the year within the lower part of the chart so again lower half of the chart difficult environment upper half of the chart positive environment so we're in a positive environment and we're a little bit extended is what that's telling me at the moment the MYSC bullish percent index so again you can look at this at a line chart or a point and figure chart. I prefer point and figure myself as it's much easier to read the chart and see what's going on. It cuts out all the noise and the time-based sort of stuff that goes on with, with a bullish percent index. So in order to reverse back to another column, it needs to reverse. It's got a 2% two, two box size, so 6% of stocks need to need to move on to um, off of bullish um signals so basically on double top signals in in point and figure charts so which is quite hard to do it doesn't happen as as often the mysc bullish percent index you can see it doesn't doesn't move into another column that often we've had a this year has been a little bit more volatile you can see we've had a, a fair for few more moves than most years so but again when you're on a column of o's you're in defense when you're in column of x's you're on offense so if you imagine it as an american um football pitch american yeah American football pitch with um, two end zones. So above 70% is your where you're trying to score into and below 30% is where the market is trying to score into. So when, when you're declining from above 70%, you're in the high risk zone there and you start to move below 70% level from the upper zone, then you're starting to move into sort of bearish conditions. So from moving up in stage two, moving down into stage three, and then down into stage four below 40 percent and then back into stage one again as you move back above that area and back into the middle again and back into stage two back above that 60 percent sort of area so at the moment potentially we've got a double top breakout again this week so it's moved back to what we call bull confirmed status on the bullish percent index statuses so the statuses were determined um a long time ago more than 50 years ago um by investors intelligence so you can find you can find those on their website or i've got a i've got a bookmarked one of those on my twitter feed so i can share that with anyone if they want they want they want that but basically it's it's really useful to to know the various statuses as as it really helps with with risk management and obviously field position in terms of what your strategy is at that point in time so at the moment we're on we've moved back to offense we've got a bull confirmed signal so in the mysc we're on we're on offense now and we're in a, a reasonable field position above that 60 percent level so we're starting to to be a bit more aggressive at this point NASDAQ hasn't yet moved back onto bull confirmed. It's still in what we consider bear correction. So you can see broke down in February here. The two is February. So the numbers are the months. And once you get above 10, it uses letters. So ABC for October, November, and then December. So obviously we're not in December yet. So back here at two, we saw we had this, this double bottom breakdown here from above the 70% level. So we got extended into the high risk zone and then we broke down in february so we had a bear confirmed signal back in february there and we've been on been on bear confirmed ever since with a few bear corrections along the way here so again when we move back to a column of x's you're on bear correction so at the moment we're still on bear correction but we're close to a potential bull confirmed signal as if we move through that 58 percent level then that would reverse this back to bull confirmed for the first time since obviously the february breakdown here so the nasdaq 
broke down much earlier than the NYC. The NYC did have a breakdown in February there, but reversed back up again. So it did, it did obviously move down at the same time, but it didn't go to the same sort of depths as we saw on the on the Nasdaq, which will you can see in other breadth charts as well, quite quite clearly. So as we we look at this one, if we looked at the individual charts, which I've got on my local desktop, I'll show you quickly. Uh, where are we? Sorry, one second. Just grab those. So, um, if we look at the individual um, NASDAQ chart, so this is the individual NASDAQ chart. So, you can see the difference between the, the combined chart and the NASDAQ chart. It broke down, broke down earlier and got much more extreme. It actually touched into the lower zone. So, similar to what we're seeing in the, in the combined chart. Obviously, that didn't make it all the way down to the lower zone, whereas the, the NASDAQ obviously got much more oversold and we've got a lot more base building has gone on in the NASDAQ compared to if I show you the NYSC individual chart here. So you see the difference between the NASDAQ and the NYSC, which the, the NYSC held up much longer, didn't start breaking down until sort of June, July time. We've only had a, a brief brief decline in a difficult environment in the NYC and it started to move back up into a positive environment whereas the Nasdaq had been in a difficult environment all the way since February time back there so those two make up the combined chart which we're which which we see here so Nasdaq NYC and the combined chart so let's go back so that's the, what we've been seeing in the bullish percents and the percentage of stocks there um Right, let me pause again for a sec. Okay, I'm back. I just needed a drink as my throat was getting a bit uh, gravelly. Um, okay, so next up, this is the, so some more market breadth indicators that we look at, the advanced decline line, new high, new lows, cumulative um, PNF breakouts minus breakdowns. So if we start with the advanced decline line this obviously this is a, a favorite of of most people so in the mysc i normally normally start with the mysc advanced decline line when i'm looking at them but you need to look at the mysc and the nasdaq advanced decline lines as well as with the other breadth charts you want to you want to compare what both are doing as as they obviously have different different types of groups list in the in the different markets like the nas the nasdaq is is much more tech oriented healthcare and various growth type stock names versus the MOSC where you'll get a lot more financials and industrials and materials so they can they can be quite different so as you can see with the the MOSC advanced decline line we made we made a new high over the last week or so which I highlighted to the members and we, we talked about and it's, it's continued on to make higher highs for the end of the week here if we look at the the Nasdaq, by comparison, you can see for the the majority of the year, it's been it's been in a much more sort of terrible state. It's been on a negative um, breadth signal for a for a long while. It only had a only had a brief pop back above in in May June time, and we moved back into a, a negative environment again for in the advanced decline line for from July all the way through to October here. So only started to make higher highs here in later later period of October. So it's still still below, obviously, the majority of the earlier year um, trade here, but it is starting to make higher highs. So we are starting to make some some small progress there compared to the MYSC, which is it based horizontally for the June to July, sort of August, September air period, and then has made, made a new high. So much more relative strength in the MYSC, like we've seen in the, the other market breadth charts. Um, Another way of looking at this is what I do, which gives which gives reasonably good signals, is the cumulative um, EMA, um, 10 and 30 day EMAs of the MYSC and the NASDAQ one. So this is the MYSC, so MYAD on stock charts. So when the 10 and the 30 EMAs cross over, then that's on a, a positive signal. And when they cross below, you're on a negative signal. So you can see we had a bit of back and forth through here. So I also, to... to smooth that out a bit i also look for higher highs and breakouts so we we got a, a potential positive signal here and then we started to make higher highs so this is now i would consider this back on a on a positive bullish signal for this versus the if we look at the the nasdaq as you can see a lot of the year like i said it was below 
EMA crossovers were, we had a few little peaks above again, May to June time. We had that strong period in the NASDAQ where stocks were moving, were moving well. If we look at the, the QQQJ there. So the May period here where, the, where we ran up strongly. So NASDAQ stocks got particularly strong there. So you can see that was that that was that period there, but then we we rolled over again. And although the majority of the, the Nasdaq um, indexes etc. have been going sideways, the advanced decline line has been has been declining from June time all the way. We only had this brief pop up in August, and it's only just crossed back above for the first time since that May period in in October. So one little higher high here, maybe maybe two just just peeking above that at the moment not not clearly clearly got further above that yet so we want to see this make a bit more progress but again the nasdaq has, has formed many many more bases than than mysc stocks so although the mysc stocks have shown better relative strength and held up much better of late um i'm actually i actually think the the nasdaq is in in a much better position personally because most of the stocks have had had six month plus basing periods so they're starting to move off into stage two and so i've got a lot more potential for for bigger moves although the mysc stocks are still obviously moving really well um if we look at new high new lows um actually well, that one. all right this is the this is the individual percentage of stocks above their 200 day 150 day and 50 day moving average charts these these are what make up the custom charts that I, I talked through earlier. So these um, the NASDAQ and the MOSC charts, so all six of these data points are, are added together to make to make those charts. So but you can obviously looking at them as a as a separated view also can give you different kind of information. So you've got your short term, medium term and long term if you look at it in this way. So MOSC I said we're only majority of the year was the long and the medium term was doing really well and the short term only came off down towards the lower zone back in July time here so buy signals for these are when they're all in sync and start to come out back through that 30 that key 30 percent level again so you can see back here the short term in MSC moved up through in April time 2020 there April um, May time in the medium term and May time in the um in the long term whereas the the nasdaq it moved a lot earlier so early april on the short term um sort of late april on the medium and long term so when all three of those are in sync and you're moving out of the low risk zone that's your buy point there so late april time was the buy point in using that um of you using that alone so if we look at again look at this combined chart that was that was this period around here so Right, let's go. Where am I? Right, new high, new lows. So this is an another one that I look at regularly. So I think it's an, an important part of the weight of evidence. So if you look at the advanced decline line, the new high, new lows, the percentage of stocks above the various moving averages, the bullish percent indexes, and a multitude of other um, breadth indicators as well. Like Stan Weinstein was famous for having more than 50 different sort of breadth indicators that he looked at in order to come up with his weight of evidence. I don't have capacity to to do that many. So I've over the years developed a, a smaller sample size that are the, the what I consider the core breadth charts and, and added a few of my own custom ones. So the new high new lows is one of those core so you can see this is the um, the Nasdaq new 52 week highs, which was at 445 on Friday versus 88 new lows. So red is new lows and grey is new highs versus the MYSC, which generally not had much in the way of new lows. We haven't got any real moves above that key 100 level in this, whereas the, the new highs has continued on throughout the year. So you can see the, the relative strength that we've seen in the, the MYSC versus the the nasdaq in terms of the new high new lows if we look at this as a combined chart you can see we've started to break above near-term peaks here so this is one two three four so we've made we've broke above four four peaks here with the new high new lows so it's definitely uh showing strength again after some normal corrective action here i saw a lot of people were getting very negative at this point back here in september um early october but 
this was this, in terms of the new high, new lows, as you can see, normal normal reactions in the new high, new lows only come back down to around this minus 1,000 sort of level here. If you start to break below that 2,000 level, like we saw in 2000, late 2018 and the 2020 COVID obviously stage four decline then you you know that you're obviously moving into a major major decline as you you rapidly rip through those levels so normal pullbacks come back down into the lower range and then we start to see recovery and we start to make above new higher highs again so this is this is once again on a on a positive signal after being fairly neutral for the last last few months but so that also moves back to a back to a positive the cumulative point of figure breakouts is is one that I do myself. This is a completely custom one, so it's the the cumulative point of figure breakouts minus breakdown. So in order to make this each day, I tally up the the point of figure double top breakouts and I minus them from the point of figure double bottom breakdowns. It's that simple, and then um, put in a spreadsheet and it makes this chart. So again, same sort of movement as we saw in the advanced decline lines, been basing for the best part of the, the year and we're breaking out potentially to new highs here above the, the short term moving averages. So this again has moved in from a neutral to a potential positive at the moment. This is a new breadth chart that I've I've only developed recently. So as I, I showed earlier within my in the S P five hundred charts and stuff, um Basically, I use these. I use the ATR bands a lot in my trading. So this, the free ATR bands again go from using the 21-day EMA, then one ATR, two ATR, three ATR, and minus one, minus two, minus three. So what this chart does is it's looking at the all of the stocks in the S&P 1500 that are on greater than plus one times ATR. So when when a stock is above the one ATR level. So it's generally in an uptrend. So this this line here, it's generally in an uptrend. So throughout a downtrend, as you can see, it, it generally doesn't get anywhere near that one ATR level because it, it generally doesn't make it back above its 21 day EMA. Once it starts getting above that and starts to get above that one ATR level, you're, you're into a, a short term uptrend. So what this breadth chart um, shows is the the percentage of stocks above the 180R level and hence in a short term uptrend. So back in January time, it's got really bullish at 67% there. Back in sort of mid March there, it was also had a period, and we obviously had the, the February, um, late January, it pulled all the way back down to below 10%. Back in late March there, below 10%, etc. etc. So throughout this period here, I've Obviously, I only got a small sample size for this at the moment, as I've only got one year's worth of data. So I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna back, back, go back through this and and fill out the data for for multiple years. But generally, these when it gets below ten percent, it's generally around a, a swing low within a few days or so. So at this point, back here in September, September the twenty first, there all the way at twentieth at three point eight seven percent. That was the most extreme it had been for the year. So that was when I. That was why I got a little bit more bullish around that time as I found this this was one of those indicators that was was extremely sort of oversold in terms of all the other periods had been had been swing lows within a few days or so. So it helped me get a little bit more aggressive around that period. And then we had this really strong move in here. And then you can see 30th of September, it was 10% higher at the 30th of September, whereas the NASDAQ was still making lower lows at that point, I believe. So and then when on the 4th, when it was making, when the NASDAQ bottomed out, this was at 22.6% of stocks in the S&P 1500 were on short term uptrends. Whereas the Nasdaq was making, obviously it was it was the day where it bottomed. So we were almost twenty percent higher than we were on the twenty fifth September. So lots of stocks had recovered back into short term uptrends while the Nasdaq was still was still declining. So the S and P five hundred was was leading at that point, and you can see we've now got all the way up to fifty eight point seven three percent of stocks at the moment. So we're back to levels we haven't seen since January, February, March sort of time when the market was obviously a lot more frothy and near the highs. So again, this was another reason why I'm a little bit more short term, doing a bit more short term trimming at the moment, because we've we've obviously come a long way in the last last month and a bit um, since the end of September sort of time. So 20th of September all the way to this period, we've we've moved to 58 percent all the way from 3 percent. So 55 percent more stocks are in 
short-term uptrends than they were back in the 20th of September. So uh, generally, is that a time I want to buy? Not really. Is this the time I want to buy when stocks are starting to move out and the, the indexes are still declining? That's when I want to buy because obviously you're going to get in on the on the trend and if you can get into the stocks with the strongest RS at those points, then then that's what I'm looking for. So I think this could be a, a really good breadth indicator going forward. Also got the minus chart, but I've only just started filling that one out and combining them. So this is the cumulative chart of the two. So again, this could potentially give good signals once I fill it out a bit better. But again, this is making, this is showing that we're getting higher highs, more more stocks are on plus 180R than they are on minus. So at the moment, only 7.6% of stocks in the S&P 1500 are below their minus 180R level versus 58.73% are above their plus 180R level. So very, very strong sort of trend at the moment is what that's showing. And the, the cumulative line, as you can see, fifth of fourth and fifth of um october there bottomed and then started to turn up so which is obviously what we've seen in the indexes as well okay that's the that's the end of the market breadth section next up we're gonna talk about the the industry groups so this is something that i um cover each week for the members so we've got the it uses the stock charts um, SCTR score, which is is made up of short, medium, and long term measures. But basically, it tracks very similar to the the RS kind of scores that you see in other in other services, IBD, and um, oh, I don't know other one, whatever the other names are. But they it it tracks really well in terms of the groups. But this this covers the the hundred and four. Um, Dow Jones industry groups that stock charts has and so you can you can break these down into individual tickers as well so if we we click on this it, uh, it takes me to stock charts automobiles group I can look at the one week change I can see what stocks are moving this week so automobiles is our strongest group the strongest this week in the automobiles group was VLCN which obviously had a really big big move of 31.83 percent there so you can look at that on a on a weekly chart here bitcoin's just triggered an alert while we're doing the video so you can see that had a that had a really big move so we can you can delve into the individual groups and see what's moving so the way i use use these is to look for sort of themes moving up the table so obviously i was talking to someone yesterday about this and he, he said our brew, brewers is what he's interested in he might be watching the video now i'm not sure but um basically the brewers has been the bottom group for the last three months so for me how i use this data is that i wait for the the group to start moving up off of the bottom of the table so if it's if you've got groups in the lower half of the table like gold mining gold mining here which has been near the bottom of the table for the bulk of the year now um so it would, it would have been a terrible um, time to start buying it back in sort of February, May, March time when this was which was near the bottom and it's still near the bottom now and hasn't really moved anywhere since because gold's in a in a stage one um, basing structure at the moment. So I want to see groups starting to move up the tables. So what we've seen recently with, with renewable energy, automobiles, so you can see renewable energy 12 weeks ago was 96 um, lower in terms of RS score and there's only 104 stocks so you can you can pretty much just say that's 96 positions lower it was actually renewables was was actually the bottom group um, for a while and automobiles was the bottom group for a while you can see automobiles have moved up 70 in the last three months so basically these with these moving each week, you've, we've seen stuff like these moving up the table. So they were they were down here, and then the next week they were moving up to here, and then they were moving up to here. So once once a, a group starts to move up out of the lower ranks and starts to get back above the thirty level, like with the the bullish percent indexes, etc. Once you start to move up the rankings into sort of the middle zone of the table, and we started to see strong movement. You can see apparel retailers moved twenty five this week and is now at fortieth. So that one's starting to get some movement out of the lower range. There, we've got aerospace move nineteen up to forty four now. So that's also moving from the lower a little bit. But and we've fifty seven in travel and tourism this week. So if we do it on a one week change basis. 
you can see like what was the strongest moves this week so recreational services travel and tourism hotel lodging and retail reits and tires which i think is a is a very small group so i kind of i probably ignore tires it's just gt moving but and and airlines so there's there's definitely a, a group theme going on here with um in terms of the reopening trade or whatever they want whatever you want to call it and because we've got airlines hotels travel and tourism recreational services they're all they're all related groups even though they're not in the same sectors they're obviously people potentially going to be spending money in those kind of stocks and things like obviously airlines people got travel travel and tourism i believe we've got the likes of airbnb and expedia here so these are two of the stocks i'm going to talk about a little bit later so these have had really good moves this week both both um gapped up on earnings later in the week so that's that's one way you can use it in that and again another way if you look at it on the the, the more further down 12 weeks so I'm, i post these as screenshots each weekend for the members as the with the different filters so one week two week four week 12 weeks as well as the overall rs score so in the last 12 weeks renewables is your strongest group now recreational services travel and tourism hotels then automobiles like they're the they're the ones that have moved the most as well as semiconductors down here so this is a looking at it on a on a three month basis can give you a it yes it's telling you what's already moved but if they've come if they've come a long way then that that gives you kind of some extra information that they're if they're coming a long way then that means that they've generally been basing so i.e there's going to be a lot of stage one bases or stocks that were in stage three and potentially making stage two continuation breakouts so these groups although they've moved a lot and they might have had massive moves they might have already moved 100 percent in some cases but that doesn't mean that they're not in good positions because they could be making a what in in the Wyckoff Wyckoff terms what we call a, a sign of strength rally if I can find find one here so um, can't really see it on on this chart let's get back to here so you've got what we call a, a sign of strength rally so you've come out of a, we've made an LPS and then we've made a sign of strength rally so if you you consider if you ignore the fact that this is a two hour chart then we've we've had that sign of strength rally and then stocks might have already moved. So if you're thinking about individual stocks, they've, they've made a base, they've had a sign of strength rally and they might be around this sort of area at that point, if they've already moved for three months out of, and they've started to move strongly up the table. So they might have a really good big base and then be, be around this point, which is early in stage two. So when, and potentially in what we call that in the backup range. So on this chart, you can't see the backup range because it just consolidated sideways and then continued on. But, but generally with, with most stocks, you'll, you'll get some backing up action. It'll test the top of the range and then you'll chop around in this area before breaking out further to the upside. So you can get obviously brilliant low risk entry points in in these kind of areas after the sign of strength rally so that's what that's what you can be looking for in these so at the moment a lot of areas of interest this week with with the theme so new theme in sort of reopening trade again last week it was renewables and automobiles as we know tesla has has been killing it and has been rallying to new highs but we also had lucid breaking out the other week we've had um fisker starting to move uh, let's go to one week's um, I said about VLCM, which was a new IPO, which has been moving really strongly. Even Ford has been doing really well of late. You can see that on there. It's, it's had huge moves and we're starting to get some of the, the other names starting to move as well. So it's it can be really useful for that. And so this is something that's really important in, in Stan Weinstein's method as well as in, in the Wyckoff method. So um, both both methods kind of complement each other as they both both have a top down approach to to investing in general in terms of you're looking at the you're looking at the market first, which we did at the start of the video. You look at the indexes, you're then looking at the market breadth, you're trying to get a feel for the what the overall market is telling you, what the overall market health is first. You're then looking at the sectors and the groups and looking for for the the best relative strength in those or the or the groups that are improving strongly and potentially going to start to move into stage two. So with the likes of airlines, which is still way down the table let's, let's scroll down i think where are we with the airlines um airlines yeah it's all the way down at 73rd at the moment still but you can see it's moved 22 places and it's 28 this week so it was near the bottom last week if 
if it's moved 28 places and it's only at 31 now. So it's right near the bottom. So they've got a lot of stocks in the airline group are going to be in making bases. And the fact that they've been at the bottom, a lot of them are going to going to have big bases. So if we quickly look at some of those, just for an example, you can see some of the moves we've had this week. A few 20% moves in here. So we've got some bases, Hawaii Airlines there. So what did I say? I posted a few on the on the feed earlier. I think DAL and AAL were, were a couple of those. Um, let me look it up. Yeah, so you can see see the kind of bases they've been forming here over the last last month, few months or so. So since July, selling climax in July, we've got this lower lower range that's formed on this one, for example. You can see the, the Wyckoff base that's formed there type thing and then we had a bit of an up thrust action there and we had this gap up move and you see very similar in in other airlines it's aal another one similar sort of price action again selling climax back down here but you could obviously have a you could have a bigger range on this one all the way from the, the buying climax up the top here where it's undercut but if we if we take it from this this lower basing here, you can see the see the structure that's starting to form with a short term selling climax at the two hundred day there, into automatic rally secondary test. So you've got your phase A into phase B, and then this is a now potential phase C potentially moving into phase D as we broke above that two hundred day and made a sort of high high follow through there. So you'd be looking for with this you're looking for that sign of strength. Um, let's get out of it. Looking for that sign of strength rally out of the range and then potential sort of backing up action so we, we're seeing a lot of that with the with the airlines at the moment so that's that's potentially an area to to start to take an interest in with multiple stocks gapping up at the end of the week this week on earnings so it's coming out of the bottom zone so if this can continue to move up with the over the next few weeks then then that could that could actually be an interesting area and there might be some potential stocks that that move into stage two again right what's next okay moving on again so that's the that's a general sort of processing term in terms of looking at the market, assessing the market breadth, seeing what the the general market health is, so obviously assessing the strategy, what your what your general risk is overall. So the market breadth is is really really useful for assessing risk um, versus just looking at index charts as index charts are are averages, so they they lag. So the market breadth is is the best way to assess risk. Um, and then looking at the groups and seeing where the RS is moving before you then delve into individual stocks. So that's that's the general process. So for me, um, I made I made some early entries. These are a few of the trades that I I've closed out this week. I did some trimming in. So D Dog, um, I made an entry back in back in August time. So like I said, the the breadth was starting to starting to improve a little bit in August time here. So you can see August. We were making lower lows then. We had this this peak up here and we started to get back into positive territory. So I started making some some test buys back then and D Dog was was one of those. You can see it with uh, the initial day. Didn't didn't do brilliant on the initial day, I had a little bit of a sort of reversal bar, but held up. It was up following this stage two breakout. So I did a I took it based on this this stage two breakout I did a I did a post on it on that week on the actual feed so after this major stage three failed stage four breakdown and it had already moved quite a long way by the time I entered it here so you can see at the stage two breakout then it already moved 87% off of this spring low to make this this new stage two breakout to new highs so I was entering after after a stage two breakout and for a for a short term swing or position trade depending on on how the market conditions progressed. So with this one entered around here, so you can see it didn't it didn't pull back too much. This one from my entry. So what do we got there? One thirty seven something. So did have to hold through about a five percent correction for for multiple weeks there with it chopping around that sort of level and for the best part of the month through September, you can see the relative strength that this showed versus the market. So you can see from my entry point here. So this is the, the blue line is the zero line, as I said. So we're we're above 
the, the S&P 500 at this point. So D-Dog was outperforming and you can see it, it continued to outperform throughout and generally respected that 21 day EMA and the, the 50 day EMA didn't even didn't even touch the 50 day on the, on the pullback there. And actually only it topped out at the stage two breakout level again when it did the pullback towards the 50 day moving average before making continuation breakout. So on Thursday, I'm, we had earnings on Thursday night coming up. So with the market being quite frothy in the short term, I decided to take take half off on Thursday. So closed out there for a reasonable gain at that point. I think, what was it, around, around 20, 20%. And then, then on Friday, with the gap up on Friday, um, and then it wasn't acting well initially compared to some of the other names like Airbnb and Bill that were also gapping up and following through, whereas D-Dog was, was pulling back after the initial gap up on the open. You can see it opened all the way up up here and then immediately pulled back. So it pulled back 6% or so there. So I closed out the remaining half on Friday for, it was around 30-ish percent. So reasonable average, average gain for a couple of months of 20 to 30% on the average there. But, so that was D-Dog. Another recent trade, which I'm still in. So I've got half. I took half off on, on Friday. Again, doing some doing some more trimming. That is, is Unity Software. So this one, this one I really liked. And um, back back when it was at this point back here, as it, I just made a stage two breakout. It's quite early in its life cycle. So we had the early stage two breakout here and it was it was in the backup range and starting to follow through so if we go back to the, the daily chart here so you can see the, the stage two breakout here we were in that backup range you can see it was it was tightening up so i bought in as it was tightening up just around the 180 level there 123 ish and then it it ground its way out through the through the volatility of september where the market it was it was making higher highs you can see relative strength was was going up while the while the market was was generally going down so we did have that that break at the end of september there where it, it pulled back quite sharply it was was getting a little bit a little bit more scary pulled back around 18 percent from its high there so i did did consider taking it out for break even but I, I let it I let it go as I don't as the 50 day moving average was still was still rising and it only had a single close below the 50 day moving average there so generally one of the rules that I got from from Gilmo and from from Mark Minervini over the years is that you you generally with the, the first close below the 50 day moving average is is not a time to sell I'm, I'm fairly sure both of them um expunged that that you should you should not not sell until till you get that a second close below the 50 days as, as a lot of the time this is a this is a point of support in terms of what's going on with the large players so as they like to the buy at the 50 days and the 200 day moving averages so if you get get a single close below it and you've still got risks tolerance then then that's not a point to exit so i i held on through that and it, it rallied up and it's been it's been grinded up along this one atr level a few little touches of the 280 r level and pulling back to the 21 day so it's been it's been grinding up through the channel and it's made around 20 percent or so 23 percent there at the moment so i decided to to trim half into the into the recent froth with the with the market being extended above its 380 r level as this is has been starting to it's not underperforming yet but it's been it's only been sort of in performing in line with the S&P 500. So I want to see this start to start to outperform again. And um, with the market being potentially extended, I, I thought it was it was prudent to, to trim a little. Um, another one, which which was actually a much harder trade initially, um, which was a ZS to hold through. So I took this as a potential position trade. So this I did I did trade it much lower back down here again, which I haven't marked up on on the chart. But at this point here, it did it had a had a ten percent pullback in here. So again, same sort of rule here. We had a, a single close below this fifty day moving average here. So at that point, potentially could have stopped it out. But I decided to decide to hold and see how it how it played out in the in the following days and whether it would follow through and it's it rallied back through that 50 day moving average and and then has never looked back and you can see it's it's closed above its free atr level on friday so this is shown continuous extreme relative strength like there's, there's no real reason to sell it 
in, other than it's it's had a really good move. It's it's only up twenty percent from my obviously entry point there, nineteen percent ish, but it's obviously up around thirty percent from the swing low. So it's had a good run. It's above its free ATR level. It could it could easily get more extended. So again, I trimmed trimmed half of this one on Friday. And another one was snow. So this. Um, I bought this on the consolidation after the gap up day, so it consolidated in a inside day. So I bought at two nine seven in there, seventy seven. It did pull back immediately the next day. It was quite quite a sharp little pullback intraday. I think we got a six percent pullback there. So again, nothing to nothing to write home about. It was only pulling back into support. So I I tend to give give my positions um, reasonable stop loss and don't. Don't try. Don't keep them too tight. I know. I know a lot of people want want to get in for um, two or three percent stops and, and try and make multiple entries. But I don't. I don't have the time intraday to to be trading that way. I'm a lot of my trades are are made to be position trades, and it works much better for me as I'm I'm not not focusing on the market as much on the intraday. I, I tend to look more at the the end, end of day charts. So. I want to see what's going on so you can see the a little demand tail there and it closed back near the high so nothing to write home about there in terms of it was just a, a, a shake out into support so and it held at the 21 day ema so that that gave me confidence to to hold that one through again few little tests of that tested the 50 day tested it again but never never committed below it and has rallied on well and so again, this is this is above the two eighty R level at the moment, so it's still in a in a strong short term uptrend. Um, so I decided to trim half off of that. I did I did trade this earlier in the year. I traded on this bar here, so entered at this point, and I did have a break even stop loss on that day there on the shakeout. So which I was annoyed at myself at as I I traded it far too tight. But obviously back in back in May time, we were I was a lot more. A lot more nervy about about getting into trades as the market had been so volatile. So I was taking a, I was having a lot more break even type stop outs at that point, which um obviously loosened up a lot more over the last last few months. So this this bar here is what we call a significant bar. So actually that was a it was a terrible idea to put that as a break even stop loss as it generally with a significant bar you'll often get a test back into the bar as this is this makes a sort of range of its own so the stop loss should have at least been below the low of that bar so i should have never got stopped out of of that trade there and obviously should should have still been holding it to this day so that was that was one of my mistakes that i made made back in may and i made a few back at that point as i took a lot of short term trades um, profits in the likes of DocQ and Net and a lot of the growth stocks that were just moving out, I I took short term trades in and and didn't hold them through, so that's a that's a lesson learned for my for myself, which obviously I'd I'd like not to repeat going forward. Right. One more trade um, this week. I attempted to to trade the sort of the disparity between this one so open had um zillow um basically crashed um got out of the real estate um business um back on whatever that was tuesday and it caused an outsized reaction in open as as one of their competitors but they're not in the same business so and they have a, a very different business model so i decided on the on the following day as it was a it had held above that 50 day moving average and the 200 day moving average and was making a demand tail we had a little hammer forming on the day to to play a sort of short term swing on that as it was an outside move it had already moved it moved 15 percent in a day and obviously the structure was st was still sound you can see the the wyckoff sort of structure that had been forming over the last sort of few months on that one as it started to break out so it was still still above the major base that we saw here you got your selling climax you'll make rally and then we'd we'd made high lows and we were in a sign of strength rally so we were in the what we call the the backup or the major backup with with that kind of move and the moving average the 50 dead crossed above so at this point i decided to to take a short-term entry in that and it it worked really well for for the first day but you can see this this bar here it on the, the end of the day the one thing i was worried about 
was that it's one of those kind of bars that looks bullish but acts bearish as it moved it might have moved up 10 15 percent on the day whatever it was but it, it couldn't commit above so you can see it, it closed within the area of resistance and you can see it had this little supply tail so in order for this to to be really bullish it should have it should have broken out on that day and like that reversal should have gone all the way through then that would have been a bullish sign to hold so the next day it reversed back strongly and basically day traded the day traders got hold of it and it, it just ground all the way back down towards my entry point so i took it out basically at break even as it's not one i was willing to hold as it's got earnings coming up but it would it had potential and it could still move out and it could still have an earnings gap start to move higher but it was in terms of a, a short-term move the the volatility is a bit too much for for my liking there and it's obviously getting a little bit messy so uh, onwards and upwards and out of that one all right a few a couple of different trades so they were they were short-term trades sort of short to swing slash position trades this was this is more of um a longer term trade that i was doing um which is in my pension accounts so nvidia and tesla so nvidia so i bought it all the way back here when the price was still 612 before pre-split so i sold out for reasonably good gain it was about coming up to 70 percent ish uh, added on back in july time here so if we look at this on a on a bigger chart you can see the the area that I was looking at so where would it go so where's my entries so april april and late july so uh, back. Uh, weekly. so if we look at this on the this had this major structure going on so april time so mid-april i bought bought around this sort of area here i think it was that week there so on that point and then i added at this point here on the weekly chart so for me this was a obviously classic wyckoff base you had spring type action we moved into a um, sign of strength rally so stage two breakout attempt into the backup the backup come a little bit further than i'd hoped so i tried to buy the initial backup there so the backup came all the way back down to the 30 week moving average before rallying on and then we got the, the secondary entry point at the 10 week moving average 50 day moving average there so i got in at that point there as an, an add-on buy so pretty happy with with the trade um oh where's my chart gone oh, i can't see it now can't see my exit where are we there it is it's the other chart so it was in there somewhere um so yeah pretty happy with the with the entry points on this one i think obviously the initial pullback uh, again being in my pension account i gave it give it a fair amount of room it did pull back about 12 percent there but it never never committed below that 200 day moving average so it was still above the the major base structure and it was still above the the 30 week moving average at the time so no bother in terms of the pension account i i, I give them give them plenty of room and then added on at this point here when i was it was it was outperforming in my portfolio throughout it had a really strong 50 odd percent move off the low there so we had a 50 50 plus percent move from may to early july and then then into the pullback and then it was tightening up in here so you can see this little sort of tight action in here where we're getting these little inside tight days it was getting really tight so i added at that point and became my my biggest position in the pension account and then it, it continued on ground on higher so you can see this started to we had a potential buying climax on thursday i exited a little bit early at 261 a few days before so my bad i should have potentially trimmed and held on but hindsight's 2020 so it was already reasonably extended at this point here if i put the free atr chart on you can see it was above above the free atr level at that point it was grinding above it so but it's now obviously got really extended above it right. so uh one more this week so you can see I, I did a lot of trades this week in terms of for me i don't normally do this much activity in a week in terms of my own trades obviously i'm generally looking for for position trades or swing trades most of the time every day but um the pension account doesn't doesn't get much activity like um, most of the entries uh, are held for 
like six months plus, maybe maybe a year or more even. But um, in terms of Tesla, I had a few trades in this one. You can see the the Wyckoff structure that was forming. So I had a few short term trades I, around this area. I talked about it. I got in on that day there. And I added on that day, and then I'm, I made a mistake and didn't. I failed to failed to exit around this point, and it became my my worst trade of the year. This one, as I held it through, and didn't exit quick enough. So it was quite a big position size, and obviously that was that was stupid on my part. So I bought the bought this initial move, which was still phase B in the in the base structure so again too early to be buying you don't with Wyckoff and stage analysis the very earliest points in Wyckoff to buy is is generally phase c which is when you start to get some spring type action on the test and phase d when you start to move out towards the sign of strength rally so potentially this is this local spring in here was still phase still phase b sort of like spring type action this this is potentially phase c but overall it's generally you want to be getting in. Um, for me, I like to get in during after the spring and the test and you start to see some follow through, a little bit of a sign of strength. You start to see some short term moving averages moving up. You're getting above that 180R level and starting to pull back into it. So for me, I would generally be looking to enter in this kind of area here a lot of the time for early entry points and then obviously add on buys as it starts to move on out. In Tesla's case, I, I got back in at this point. I got in at uh, what I thought was potential phase C type action at the time. So we had that sort of spring and test in there. So I was buying the, the spring and test and follow through very early in Tesla there, which obviously worked out well on my pension account. Again, we look at it on the weekly. You can see it was what were we there. So it's around around this sort of area here. We had this sort of failed stage four breakdown attempt into a spring. And then it's, it's just ground on higher and, and continuing to make new highs. So really good trade up 90, 93% at the end of it. And obviously only a single entry. So cash that one out this week at 11, 11.91. It could obviously continue to go up in parabolic fashion. Obviously I think Elon Musk has been tweeting he's going to sell 10% of his stocks this week. So what that does to it. No idea at this point um, how if ever that's absorbed or not, but I would imagine it's going to introduce some volatility at the very least. So fairly happy with my with my exit on that one, and obviously a good good what we got one two three four five f um, almost a hundred like ninety ninety plus percent in in five months. So so pretty good for the uh, the pension account. I think it added around 10% on, it, on its own to the pension account as obviously that's a, a really big move and, and same with Nvidia Nvidia because it was my biggest position this this actually added added around 11 or 12% to to the actual account for the year so both of those are probably two of my, the best trades I've done this year in terms of actual account gain on their own other than SI earlier in the year which which also had a really really big move and and recently backed which which has just exploded and and had like huge moves within a very short amount of time. So I've also trimmed out of that recently and I've mean, only got half a position left on that one, but it's it's also obviously done done really good things for the account. So having a having a strong strong end to the year at the moment, which I'm sure lots of people are. As I'm not under any illusions that it's it's my my skill that's doing it. It's that the market is in is in um, obviously a good state at this point as we're coming out of major bases and starting to rally and we're starting to get stage two breakouts again. So obviously taking some profits where I can and trying not to be too aggressive with the profit taking as as I've made that mistake in the past and and then missed out on, on much bigger moves. So right, moving on. Um, let's move on to some of the some of the charts of interest over the last last um week um so there was a few um earnings gaps at the end of the week so bill and airbnb so as you can see on this chart i've highlighted all of the with these vertical dotted lines all of the points where this has appeared in the the members watch list so each day i do the the stage analysis members watch list and obviously certain stocks as they move up and as they start to develop bases start to move onto the watch list so for example bill started to move onto the watch list back in april time here it started to get a few like we had three 
three um, days of it being highlighted within April. It started to develop its base. We've got that phase C action in there. So you've got spring and a test and then follow through out into phase D with the sign of strength rally. So highlighted it within phase D here multiple times and then on the backup multiple times in the backup and then on the stage two breakout and follow through. And then as it's made this earnings gap up move again, highlighted it and then potentially uh, as it was doing the fish hook type move here highlighted it again and then as this base started to develop we started to go sideways and it started to ease off it was still still looking really good on the long term we look at on the weekly chart here you can see it was building a really good base above the rising 10 week moving average there so again got multiple highlights throughout early october there and has now made a, a new gap up move to new highs again so highlighted it the day before earnings there again so this one's been one of the most highlighted stocks of the year and i haven't traded it so that's something i'm i'm aiming to change as generally if a stock is highlighted numerous times within the watch list then i want to have at least a small position in it as clearly it's something that i'm interested in so it's that thing about opportunity cost and it might have just been each time that I was interested in it that I didn't have capacity to to buy it, but I think I need to need to make a rule to to find a way into into a stock that I'm interested in in a big way. And you can see this is since I started highlighting it back in April time here. This is this has had a huge move of over a hundred percent now. So obviously, if you average that out over the whole time and you got in at a more average price, then you've still got probably fifty percent plus plus moving that over the time. So really good one of this year has been built and potentially could continue on to new highs if the market the market doesn't stall out. You can see it's just in a strong institutional advance phase there. Airbnb, so this is another one. I, I tried to trade it multiple times back here. So I did try and get in. I did actually trade it and I got stopped out a few times in, in this sort of area here. As it, it just wasn't ready yet. You can see the 50-day moving average was still declining. So this is an area where I, I like to start highlighting stocks as they're starting to get back towards, they potentially had a selling climax. They're starting to move out of a, a channel maybe. starting to So it was starting to come out of this downtrend channel. It was starting to get back towards the moving averages again. It was above its 21-day. It wasn't above that 50-day moving average yet. So it was still starting to develop its base structure. And then we had this significant bar day, which I highlighted again, and it's pulled back into there. So a lot of the time with significant bars, you generally won't see it pull back below the low of the significant bar. Like when you get big volume, big price spread, and it actually clears multiple levels. So these kind of bars, I think other people call them something else, high volume close or HP, HPE on trader line, I think, and uh, power earnings gaps and all sorts of type of things like these kind of ones. I call them significant bars. Like it doesn't matter what caused the bar. It's basically, it's a big bar and it's got big volume and it cleared some levels. So, and then this becomes a new range to then focus on. So within the coming days, from, so I might highlight, I'll tend to highlight a stock on a significant bar day. And then in the coming days, you want to watch how the price action develops in the coming days. So if the price action doesn't pull back below, much below half of that significant bar, and forms within the top half of the bar, then it's obviously very strong. You can see here, it was still holding above the 21 day, got nowhere near the low of the bar, started to grind up in here again. Then we got this breakthrough, the close of that. So again, fish hook type move in there. So you've got potential entries up there, or you've got potential entries in the tight areas in here. So again, I was highlighting it in the tight area in here. And again, during this basing structure here once it started to get back above that 200 day moving average as well and now this is now finally made a made a clear breakout so potential i think we've got a, a stage two breakout on this this week's potentially this week's one of this week's best stage two breakouts probably should have highlighted that in the actual in the feed actually as a, on the weekly chart but it's been highlighted multiple times on the daily chart you can see volume was more than two times the average volume but you can see all these lines here of where it was highlighted to stage analysis members in the watch list and so there's plenty of chances to get in before that stage two breakout occurred as it was starting to develop its base and starting to move out of the base and and get up into into the latter part of stage one here so that's that's how you can use the stage analysis watch list if you if you do become a member 
And if you don't become a member, then I do post a lot of these charts on the on the public Twitter feed as well. So and so, it's Airbnb has been highlighted multiple times on the on the public um, watch list as well, where I post like a small sample of the daily watch list. So there's been plenty of opportunities for people to to see what I'm seeing and then obviously get into that. So again, shame on this one that I was short-term trading it. It was doing some break-even type trades and some small losses. I didn't, I didn't hold it through the pullback into this point, and I didn't, didn't get back in at this significant bar. Again, this is something I'm really keen on in on recently now, which I wasn't focusing on so much earlier in the year, but it's something throughout this year that has become much more important in my own trading and I want to I'm looking for these significant bars much more often it's it's something I scan for daily now as well as looking back at the so when I do the scan for the significant bar I'll also run the scan for the day before um for the day before day before day before so for the last four or five days and then so all of the significant bars from the last four or five days and then your so you're then getting this kind of price action. You can see the big bar and you can see how it's reacted to the significant bar. So some will immediately falter, start to crash down. It'll be a fake out move where large players have sold into that bar. But the ones where the institutional players step in and they hold it and it starts to form in the upper range where it gets really tight at the top of the bar before moving on up again, then they're the ones that you want to get involved in. So this was Airbnb was a really good example of a significant bar as it was obviously in a good point in its basic structure. We'd had a selling climax and then we started to form higher lows in here and we'd moved out and we were in a sign of strength rally and it was holding in the backup of this range here. So the the pullback here actually stopped exactly at that level and started to move back out again so this was this was an excellent example of a significant bar if you want to if you want to study those so again today friday we had a yet another significant bar with the earnings gap so strong volume cleared multiple levels stage two breakout but now as you can see it's way above its free atr level at 193 there so it, it may need to consolidate a bit a lot of the time when you get the stage two breakout it's it can be quite extended at the stage two breakout so you can see in the last we're 53 percent above the swing low that formed in in july there and we're above that free atr level so it could it could need to consolidate a bit and obviously on the stage two breakout you want to see you want you're watching for the major backup so once this starts to stall out and then starts to roll back over again we want to see this this hold again with with it being a significant bar you go from the close the day before to to the higher the bar so this is now the new range for that so any kind of backing up action we'd want to see within this range and wouldn't want to see it undercut the low of that but ideally you want to see it really get below you want to see it form up in the upper half of that range so 190 ish if it does start to pull back immediately obviously if it continues up then this range would expand a bit but if it did start to pull back immediately you wouldn't want to see it do much more than come back in towards 190 and then start to chop around and form up and tighten up vcp type action before moving on out again so that's the kind of thing i'd be looking for on that one if you're if you're attempting to enter at this point in it obviously you should have been entering back down here or even in the lower lower part of the base down here once you've before we got that significant bar as the the moving averages were starting to turn up you've got the 21 day above the 50 day and we're starting to tighten up within there so there was multitude of entry points in this one throughout sort of july to september time and we've we've had a few more since and friday was obviously giving us another clue that we've now got to watch and see how this how this moves if you didn't get in on the open on friday on the gap up which obviously with power earnings gaps or again whatever you want to call them if you don't buy the open then you're you're generally too late until until the next day so you can use anchored vwap from this bar or you can you can obviously wait and see how how it consolidates within the coming days so again looking for this kind of price action where it doesn't get below that bar it starts to tighten up on lower volume you want any down days to be small price spreads on low volume and you want any up days to start to either be low volume on and small bars or, or if they're bigger bars then you want the volume to start increasing again so that is that one um so there was a, a multitude of stage two breakouts this week. Um, 
not all of them were high quality so i've only i've only highlighted a few in here so i posted these earlier in the position trader fred and on the on the private twitter feed for for the members but we've got qcom was one of the better ones of the week after airbnb so one of the things that i do with with stage analysis is i've developed something called what i call sata so s-a-t-a which is the stage analysis technical attributes so down the bottom here we've got the the stock versus the S&P 500, which is your normal Mansfield relative strength line. We've also got it versus its peer group. And we've got it the peer group versus the S&P 500. And we've got the sector versus the S&P 500. So each one of these gets a point if it's above basically the relative, um, the zero line, the 52-week MA. So as you can see on this one, we've got one point here. We're just moving above here. So we've got another point potentially just moving above here. So just about give that a point. And just tweaking above there. So that's a point on that one as well. And it also gets a point if it's in stage two. So this made a stage two breakout. So this is actually moved up to what we call a, a SATA score of five. And you can see the week before it had zero, 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 and one. So it was, it's moved from a one to a five in a week with this breakout. So really strong move and change in the technical attributes based on this this earnings gap so if we go down to the daily chart here you can see the sort of local spring type action and test and then follow through for the 200 day moving average here and then these this earnings gap here you can see the the amount of volume on these two days and it followed through immediately the next day which obviously is a is a good sign it's it's not consolidated in that area so this was our significant bar so I was just talking about, so from this point to this point here, that's your significant bar. You can see we followed through immediately. So straight through the high of that at 160 and closed above it. We did get some, obviously, supply tail at the top there. So it is definitely some some short-term profit taking going on at the very least after after such a strong move in a in a short period on that earnings gap so we had a 37 percent move there so at the moment with the follow through and close and it was still a positive close of 4.43 percent so i'll just assume that is um profit taking to begin with but obviously continue to observe and evaluate it on each day so at the moment this is in an early stage two again after basing here so we moved into stage three with this change of behavior here and then it's consolidated sideways for multiple months we had a little bit of an up thrust in action in here but you can see the stage three range formed in the lower part underneath the 30 week moving average which flattened out over time and started to turn down there so we started to move back below here so at this point here is what we call the um second point of fear this is what you often see um, when you get some spring type action. So we got what we call a local spring and then it followed through. So when you get a local spring, um, for me, I consider um, once you've got a, a well-formed base and you get you get some spring type action and it starts to move up again with a potential sign of strength rally, then I consider that to be moving back into stage one at that point there. So we've moved from stage three into stage one here and then we've made the, we've made the breakout above clearly above the base here so potential stage two breakout here it was a new closing high at least we've still got resistance from the prior highs back at the the end of the year or start of the year here so it's not really it's not fully through yet so it could it could need to consolidate and go sideways for a while but if it does follow through and we get a major sign of strength here and then i'd want to see the back some backing up action that held above the top of the range there so QCOM is, is looking really, really interesting. Um, EXPE. So we talked about this, the group earlier in terms of this week's this week's theme of travel, travel and tourism, airlines, recreational services, etc. There was a bit of a reopening trade theme going on again. So again, I've marked up the, the various stages on this one over time. We had this failed stage four breakdown attempt here, which then reversed back up again. That strong move there back through the 30 week moving average, and then it's consolidated sideways for a little while here. So we've got like a a bit of a cup and handle type pattern, but it's obviously a, a crappy cup and handle. As you get with cup and handle type moves, you want to be running up into the cup and handle. And so it's not really, it's just, it's it's come out of a lower range and we've got the, 
we've got some spring type action here and then a sign of strength rally and then it's consolidated in a in a backup so if you actually take this this range here this channel and then you imagine that as a, a horizontal channel then this is your your sort of wyckoff range so you've got your buying climax your matic rally and um, reaction and secondary test you've got your testing in phase b and then we've got a spring and a test and the follow through and so we've got like a what we call a declining um declining wyckoff range there and then we've moved up into our sign of strength rally here and then the backup action so we've had a, a stage two breakout from the from the backing up action again sata score on this one is a four out of five you can see the the peer group is still underperforming the s p 500 but everything else is is outperforming so if we look at this on the daily chart here, you can see big volume coming in. Obviously, I didn't highlight the volume there. With the stage analysis method, we want to see more than two times the average weekly volume. So if we go back to QCOM here, so that was more than two times the average volume. So you can see massively compared to what we've seen recently. So much more, more than twice what we've seen for at least six months there on that breakout there. Not so good in terms of EXPE. It's We've had a few spikes up to this level. So not quite showing the same kind of strength, but it is two times the um, the 10 week moving average. So is what I use for the average for that. So basically it's 2.34 times. So it is, is good volume on the, on the breakout move here. You can see the owners gap up day. So it was only on Friday. So we now need to see how this significant bar reacts. So again, the bar goes from the close to the next day. So you can see that that is our new range. So we're looking at now so we want to see this consolidate in here and ideally not come much below half of that so the fact that this has got support in here and there's major support from that you wouldn't want to ideally i wouldn't want to see this this drop much below sort of that sort of area in there so if it does does start um consolidating you wouldn't want to see it doing much worse than that you might get a few dips below and then spikes back out again but that's that would be reasonably weak action. Ideally, you'd want to see it consolidate in the in the upper part of this before, obviously, moving out, making making new high moves. So that would be more ideal than if it starts to come back in. But sort of ultimate level of would be for it to come back into and start to find support sort of down sort of here, a little bit below that sort of box I just drew there. So around the 170 level minimum sort of, but ideally hold above the 175 level. Uh, next up, said I. So this is uh, another, another one that's uh, been a, a popular one on Twitter for a long time, but it's obviously very, very sloppy in terms of how it's traded. So it's the... The people that trade with very tight stop losses have, have not been able to hold this one since the May low. So from the May low, it's it's had a really good rally of 90, 90 plus percent. But I, I guarantee most of the canceling type traders have have really struggled with this one as it's it's been it's been really, really troppy and they they tend to have much tighter stop losses. So again, this made a, a stage two continuation breakout to new highs this week, 2.26 times average weekly volume. See the RS is starting to outperform the S&P 500. It's got a SATA score of three out of five. As you can see down here, you can see the group versus the S&P 500 and the, the actual um, sector versus the S&P 500 are underperforming. And the group has been underperforming since July time there and got worse over the last week. So it's in the not sure what that group is let's look at the group the full quote it's in the media agencies group but in communication services so communication services took a bit of a whack over the last few weeks i think with the likes of fb and stuff getting getting hit so this one's in what we now call the institutional advance phase so from its ipo it's just been moving out of the turbulent zone so the turbulent zone really really did suit its name on this one as you can see throughout this period it was it was very choppy got below that 50 day moving average and did manage to close below it multiple times so if you did try and enter in this sort of area around here or on breakout moves up here or even around this area here you might have taken yourself out of it around this point here because obviously you got multiple closes below the 50 day moving average so we did have some sort of spring type action and the test and then follow through and then it's followed through we had some sloppy sort of breakout where it closed back down again and it's moved back higher again so this one is a really difficult one to trade as it, every earnings gap up it's had this one and this one it immediately pulls back in again 
So it's not, it doesn't catch the attention of the big traders so much. There's a lot of immediate selling before it starts to grind back higher again. So although generally positive overall on the trend, as we can see here, so that's an, it's an uptrend. You see the moves below that it hasn't respected the 21 day EMA very well over time. And it's pulled all the way back into the 50 day moving average multiple times. So a very, very difficult one to trade. So it's for me, it's much more much more one that you would potentially stick in your in your pension account and and just let it go um using using like the life cycle trade type rules where you you wouldn't obviously exit it until it started breaking below the the 200 day moving average versus the obviously the much more short term trades which clearly the the sloppy price action is not suited to um right another one I wanted to highlight was CPRI so this one um this one has been obviously making a made a new stage two breakout this week again 2.52 times the average weekly volume five out of five in terms of the SARTA score with it rallying back up with the group just getting back above the S&P 500 this week so it was on a four last week and that or maybe even a actually three of those it was on a potentially on a two or a one last week it's moved moved rapidly back up to a five with the breakout this week again so you can see earnings gap breakout followed through did pull back on friday a bit but still didn't commit back into that significant bar so again same thing that we've talked about previously significant bar day here this is our this is the range then looking for so of where you'd want to see it sort of hold within so around half of that which as you can see if you look at back on prior prior um, prior bits would be support from the area in there so you wouldn't want to see this come back in below 60 ideally you might get a test at the bottom of that that bar there it would obviously shake out a few people as a lot of people like to put the initial stop under the low of the day of the breakout gap so you, you often get little little peaks below below that before it, it reverses back up again so but Obviously, if it can if it can consolidate much higher, then that would even that would be much more bullish for this one. So the reason I like this one, you can see the you see the structure that's been forming. I highlighted it multiple times to the stage analysis members, and we had a, a buying climax, automatic rally, secondary test in here, and then we had phase phase B where we had some up thrusting type action. It formed up, and then potential early phase C in here again, another up thrust and pull back into the 200 day and started getting below it a bit. So this potentially the phase C area now up into phase D of our finally getting our sign of strength rally. So this is this was an early phase C attempt, but then we actually this was our final phase C for moving up into into D and out into the sign of strength rally. So watching how this this forms a back up now. If you look back at it on the weekly chart here, we had a really strong stage two advance last year. Obviously, off of the ultimate low, this one has had a big old move, almost a thousand percent last year. So, from the stage two breakout point, it was much smaller, only about 150 percent, as it made a ginormous move off of the off of the low within stage four and stage one. So, which again, for short-term traders, these areas are are tradable. You don't have to wait to the stage two breakout in order to to get in. You can obviously trade around within stage one once it starts to shore up a bit. So these areas in here are areas I would avoid personally. It's not it's not part of the stage analysis method. And in, and in Wyckoff, you'd obviously it'd, it'd still be very early. You've got like a um, uh, what we say a rising channel going on in there, so it would be a, a difficult one to to trade. You would obviously wait for it to tighten up a bit and start to get in around around these areas here. Once it starts to shore up a bit, you've got some cup and handle type vcp type action going on in there you can see the tightness going on so potentially look at you'd be looking at it in these sort of areas for earlier entries which again would have had they had big old moves themselves of 200 plus percent there so stage two breakout on the earnings gap want to see how this forms in the backup but obviously plenty of potential in this one for for a rally up towards the 100 level at least in, if it if it can hold up and, and form in a, and tighten up within this range as based on its obviously prior prior stock action. So that's what I'm watching for on that one. Um goose, so this is another one. Again, SATA score of four out of five. So technical attributes approved improved. We had this again a declining 
um, base structure here, which was uh, the bind climax into your automatic reaction, secondary test, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Spring type action down here, and then a test and follow through. So we're in the, the sign of strength rally as it moves into stage two here. Okay, it was Friday was the gap up day, so we need to see how this significant bar develops. Ideally, you want to see it form up in the upper range here above this this major area of support here so you wouldn't want to see it get much below 45 ideally there and start to, to consolidate or follow through so that's what i'm watching for on goose okay all right to the watch list jesus we're one four nine in um just pause for... right i'm just just right um so finally tonight is the is the watch list stock so i think obviously this has been going on for quite long so i think one hour 49 minutes i can't imagine most of you are, are still still watching at this point um so these have been posted obviously on the members feed i won't i won't go through these in in detail we've obviously talked about a fair few of them there's a few few new ones of interest starting to come back into focus big c um again the i talked about earlier the airlines some groups some groups of interest that four airline stocks coming in some gold mining stocks starting to appear we've got some software names in there the recreational services names that i talked about earlier travel and tourism so you can see the the themes that have been coming in we've obviously covered a few of these starbucks was actually a a little bit of an interesting one. We've got this this shakeout move potentially. Looks like I imagine that was earnings, and then follow through. It's actually followed all the way back through here, and made a made a new high back above the fifty day moving average there, and got back above the one ATR level. So, so Starbucks is is coming back into focus here, as that's that's what we call a a Wyckoff spring. So highlighting highlighting this one for the members. Obviously had that the upfrust action there where it topped out. So we've got a we've got some spring type action here. So watching for a potential stage two breakout on this one. Again, volume you'd want to see strong volume. It's already had strong volume this week low. So potentially two times the average. So as I said before, you want to see stronger volume on the breakout week. But if we can get a move up there, then we could obviously have a reversal. Starbucks with a reversal bar back up into into stage two breaking breaking out of this sort of near term near term range here so that's why highlighting starbucks as we've got that sort of down trend channel break so watching for, for how this sort of significant sort of bar sort of range here develops whether we pull back into this and start to rally up from there so that one that one is interesting um it just quickly get the candle glance up again so atom was another one i wanted to highlight so this one's been forming a, a strong wyckoff base for a while here had the undercut of the 200 day a few times it's had a few trips below the 200 day but you can see it's been tightening up the relative strength has has been improving sort of consolidating around the, the zero line you can see the vcp type sort of action that it's, it's had so potential starting to break out here attempting to sign the strength out of this sort of near term tightening so you want to see a want to see a sign of strength rally in this one where it breaks out breaks out into new highs with a sign of strength and then then starts to make the backup range so watching watching for that one on atom um let me get back to the candle glance again see if there was anything else i really wanted to highlight um cat probably we've already done airlines doing good um lung was a fairly new one cucumber we've already talked about and um, plnt was another stage two breakout this week enox is starting to look a little bit more interesting i highlighted this one the other day starting to come out form this stage one base down here starting to get get back above some atr levels here so you can see throughout the base here the one atr level it's been below so we started to close back above that one atr level and even the two atr level it's pulled back into the one atr level on friday so starting to see some change of behavior at the bottom of the range here so this base here is now potentially moving into could potentially be moving into phase d so that's that's something i'm i'm watching for on that one um let's also say page two on this toll brothers not so much interesting airlines again scott's miracle grow starting one of the only k 
cannabis stocks that's starting to look a little bit interesting again as it's having a little bit of a reaction with some volume. So a bit of short covering rally going on. Uber and Lyft both both basing out, starting to get back towards their 200-day moving averages. So you can see the, the base structure that's formed on this one. Right. Stick that across there. Obviously had the undercut, a big undercut sign of weakness here. So shook out a lot of people down at this point here. You can see the volume did pick up at here. We had a significant bar. And then since that significant bar there, it's held held that range as, as that entire bar. It only pulled back into around halfway into that bar on the pullback below the 50-day moving average there and then it's rallied back up again. So again, with this kind of one, we were looking for Looking for a move back above the 200-day moving average and close above. We want to see strong volume, and then you'd want to see you'd want to see a sign of strength rally out of the range, backing up action, moving on out. So that's what I'm kind of watching for on that one. Okay, I think that'll do for tonight. I don't want this to run into two hours. So thank you for watching. If you have, if you've got all this way, I really appreciate it. And obviously. If you like the video, I do do one of these a week. It's generally the weekend ones, generally maximum of an hour and a half. It's normally about an hour to an hour and a half. I've only, it's only longer this weekend as I've obviously had to explain everything in so much detail as I've been going through to, to non-members. So whereas obviously the members know know the kind of info that I put out. So and have gone through the resources thread on the stage analysis forum and and obviously I have a much better idea of what I'm talking about if I'm so it's a bit more advanced normally in terms of how I talk so I've, I've sort of tried to sort of make it palatable for people that don't understand why cough or or stage analysis on this video and obviously explain through the market breadth charts in a lot more detail than I normally would do so I hope you enjoyed it if you want to become a member I'll leave the the link below on, on YouTube and in the in the Twitter post, or if you go to my profile on on Twitter, or you go to the stageanalysis.net website, then obviously you can you can easily join through through there as well. So obviously, be happy to have you aboard. And obviously, this is the kind of stuff that I do all the time. So it's not an alert service. It's the, the stage analysis members service is is kind of analysis and ideation service as someone told me earlier in, in terms of how they explained it i think i think that's a really good way of explaining it i, I obviously look look for the the market i look for the group strength and i look for the individual stock stocks of interest and start to highlight them to members with with daily watch list posts and intraday posts on the twitter feed and the forum to obviously consolidate ones that we've already we're already looking at and that, that's starting to look a bit more interesting so kind of is a is a step-by-step -step process and obviously helps helps with risk management and and getting into the right right stocks at the right time so i hope hope it was helpful i hope hope you enjoyed it so and i'll we'll see you on the next one